quite a few times just behind those trees is my favorite big pit subject to this video around 180 200 acres lifting just sand pit every almost every swim oh, nice stuff almost every swim I drive past has got memories memories of captures just great Fun. I'm going to take a little pause behind this one. There we go, where they open up. There we go, look at that. What you see over there is uh, it's not the end of the lake, that's an island. You've got the same again on the other side of it. It was back in 2001. I had a three fish catch from this swim, including what was then a late record. Twenty-three years since I first cast out into this big old pond. Lots of changes have gone on in that time. Not just the lake in myself, but I've got so many great memories from down here. You know, great captures, great friends, great people, great times. Now, yeah, I caught that uh, 32 pound late record back in 2001 and that was the cue for me to start pointing the the car, the van, whatever I was driving at the time, down the A1, down to the, uh, the L stove, the St. Ives, and just chased my dreams, chased 40 pounders. So that's what I did, but I always kept in touch with this place. And, yeah, there's quite a few uh, stockings have gone over the years, you know, mostly from when CMETs controlled the lake, and then more recently, there's been some stockings from you know, local fish suppliers like uh, Five Star and NG Fisheries, both of which are. Uh, I'm pleased to say are really uh, coming on and the old CMEX stockings they make up the bulk of the fish probably I don't know four five six hundred well I don't know that's just a rough guess in total you're probably looking oh I don't know to know six seven eight hundred carps maybe more maybe less I don't know it's good fun to find out the only way to find it out is with, uh, with a rod of line and seeing what holes there is. Uh, a few surprises still out there. Surprises for me anyway. You know, fish that I didn't know existed. You know, I had a session uh, a couple of years back. You know, I caught a fish I was really... I was actually targeting. I was fishing in an area where it comes out the big folly. The same session I got acquainted with the big folly. I caught a, um, a mid-20 ghost here. I've never even knew it was, uh, was in here. You know, pleasant surprise. I'm not sure the surprises are going to be some uncaught whacker. That would be nice. But just anything that uh, that comes along, it's kind of nice not being too familiar with every single fish in the lake. You know, there's a lot of fish in there. You know, other people have given names. I don't know them. I'm not sure I even want to know them. I just want to see them. Oh, excuse me. I just like to see them roll up in my nets. Every capture from a lake this big is. Uh, it's a little victory. I can't talk about the fish in this lake without talking about the breed. Oh my god. 
to breathe. No, I'm only joking. They, uh, they are impressive creatures, although they can be a bit of a nightmare at times. They do average uh, round double figures, but there are ways of slowing them down. You know, you just leave the particles and tallies at home, just feed big hard boilies, tiger, although they do eat the tiger nuts. But I see they eat them, they pick them up and spit them out. I've actually watched that with my own eyes, so they don't eat them, but still, they pick them up and uh, we can get hooked on them. But trying to avoid them, you know, big, you know, three inch, 80 mil pop ups. You know, I use um, 80 mil double snowmen, sometimes three of them, big hook, long hair. Slows them right down, thankfully, so I can get a good night's sleep. Because at two o'clock in the morning, when it's peeing it down, and that alarm goes, I want it to be screaming with a carp on the air. One of the changes that has been happening in recent years is uh, we've been allowed to use dinghies again, which is great. Now, I wasn't uh, straight on the dinghies, but I thought, sorry if you can't beat them, join them. So, I'm not a fan of bait boats, so I'm going to do the dinghy route. And even with dinghies, I know you can get echo sounders and waypoints and etc. But I just like kind of fishing a more, more mechanical sort of way. I've got a couple of H blocks, I go out. And I'm just bouncing around, just donking a lead on the bottom. I've always done alright with fishing the marker and spot. And I'm, even with the dinghy, I'm fishing pretty much similar spots. But this time, I'm just getting oh so much more accurate. And just being above there and feeling the actual bottom. In. You can't see the bottom in most of the uh, places. The sailing club put the blue dye in the lake to knock the weed back so they can actually sail. But it's just uh, opened up a new dimension to my fishing and I caught some cracking fish last year to, uh, as a result of it. It can be good fun and hard work as well, especially when there's a bit of wind on it. It doesn't take much wind and you are all over the place in that dinghy. But I'm fortunate, I've got a, I've got a strong back and strong shoulders. And, uh, keep on it now. The dinghy I've got is a seagull, it's not a massive dinghy, but then again, all I'm doing is taking baits out, finding spots, taking the rigs out. I'm not carrying tackle from one side of the lake, so why, why bother with a great big one? So when I was first approached by uh, Richard at Nutribase about making some YouTube content about my uh, fishing on here and basically big, big pits in general, that was uh, the premise to uh, you know, cover this style of fishing now. All I had to do was, through the autumn, catch uh, a good fish or two as basically put icing on the cake. So, well, how did that go? The carp gods give her. It's a cold in today, but anyway, back in the autumn, I've got a mission, catch a carp, I've got a bit of a plan in mind, I've got an area of the lake that's got autumn form, I can go in that swim regular, I'd bait up, and hopefully uh, catch one or two, so, first uh, trip back down, I guess in there, I guess in the swim, I'm thinking, I guess out in the dinghy, first drop down with the eighth block, which is roughly an area, just long range casting, I'm talking 30, 130-ish metres from the bank. First bounce down with it, crack, it's like, oh! And I know from previous uh, explorations with the marker float, it's around 17, 18 foot out there, that's what I want. Because I don't think any water, not just big fish, any water, when you get water that deep, that's where all the, basically, all the crap sinks, all your detritus, all your silt, sinks down there, it should be soft. If you've got hard bottom down deep, it's where fish have been feeding. There's no two ways about it. And I'm, uh, I've am i dropped on that spot lucky. So anyway, from the 2H box, I've got a quick uh, map of the area, not too much. Spread a few uh, 
82 mil big fish mixes around and it was a big enough area for three rods that one so that's what i did got those set up put a fourth rod way off to, to the right there's another kind of um, i thought it was a bar but it sends out more of a upwards ledge and uh, so that's got a bait first night on there nothing everything went out perfect the night before so i just just left them you know why change uh, what's gone out perfect we're kind of in that changeover period where bite time can be well basically any time so i just wanted baits in 24 hours a day so i could hopefully pinpoint when bait bite time was that second night in i uh, found out it was a little after midnight i got you know, like the beep 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 beep, beep as the uh, bobbing tightened up to the rod pulled out the clip and i was actually on mono at the time so it just kind of held there as the uh, stretch was taken out of the mono and uh, I was on the rods and been away. I was probably 30 seconds into the fight and I realised I'm it's late October and I'm just paddling barefoot in the edge of the lake. So what? Well, I don't care. I'm, I'm playing a carp and it was a good carp. You know, it felt nice, solid, steady fight. Nothing too spectacular into the net it went and it was obviously it was a good fish, a good start. So that fish weighed just under 33 pound. It was either just under or just over, I can't remember. It doesn't really matter, but it was a lovely, rinky, wrinkly old, deep-bodied, clean uh, mirror. What a start. Unfortunately, in the excitement, I forgot to get any video footage of it like a bit of a muppet. That's pretty much what I was uh, I was doing there. But I'm a fisherman before a videographer or photographer. I'm a fisherman. That's just me. Oh, this, is a, this is a new thing for me, trying to film and do everything there. The next week at work dragged as it generally does when you just want to go fishing when you need to go fishing but soon uh, half past four on sunday came round the van was loaded i was straight in there and straight down to the lake and it was uh, it was a bit of a mission to get the rods out i'll be honest not everything goes smoothly but that first night i was in again i got a bite this time it was one of the uh, i think it was one of the five star stockies a little um, lovely scaly little thing really, really beautiful fish one for the future that was only about you know 12 13 pound whatever it was but still it was a carp i was happy next day came round i was out in the day the weather was calm enough for me to get out there and you know give the spots a good mapping everything finally went out absolutely perfect got the three rods on the large area along with a few kilo of uh, big fish makes bit of crumbs some tigers some solubles the fourth rod the right hand rod went on the bar ledge type thing you know that i had quite a bit of bait out in the boat with me and it just felt right so i thought sod it you're getting the lot and there was probably about three four kilo went out quite tight and that uh, had a high pop up on it an 18 mil uh, that night came around and that's the rod that got to bite, the uh, the right hand, the fourth rod. Now, it was a beep, 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 beep. That's the bobbin coming up, it's out the clip, the line's tightening up, that's a mono, that rod. And just as I'm getting out of the bag, even though on a tight clutch, he absolutely ripped off. That was it, you know, straight past the wellies again, straight into the lake. I'm playing with this fish and, wow, it took about another 20, 30 yards of line off me straight away. And you can tell it is something powerful. It's not another stocky. Now, what I should also say, it was pissing it down with rain at this time. I've got my raincoat on. I've got my head torch on. Not my glasses. Head torch. My raincoat's got kind of like a peak, so it's kind of sort of as the torch. It was quite good. But it, you could tell this was, you know, something uh, something considerable on the other end. Now, a lot of fish in here. They've got big paddles, they fight, but what I think is a bit of a um, bit of a giveaway is when you get a fish, it gets to the end of its run and it just has lots of hanging time before it turns and starts coming towards you again. That That is a sign of a big fish and that is what I got instantly from this. And it just kept going and going. At one point, it's gone under all three of the other lines. I'm giving it the side stream to kind of get it back. It come back, it went back again. And it come back. All this is in the darkness. It's in the pouring rain. Anyway, finally, it's circling within about 20 yards of me. I'm thinking, come on. I've had it on for a good few minutes now. Probably 15, 20. 
it was a hard fight and the longer a fight goes on the more paranoid you get am i not holding up is my hook hold good but thankfully everything was you know click the head torch to its uh, dullest beam so i could just see where the line was and uh, after such a hard fight it was it was such a relief for that fish to get safely netted at first time but then you put the head torch onto its uh, you know full torch full beam you look over the net and you get that moment of truth when you look at the fish and it's like ooh, that is a big fish and i was looking down first you see its head i could see my pocket just kind of like pulsing in and out of its mouth as it's breathing and it had its head there and then its body just kind of grew from it you know it's a full it was first in november it is a big fat full autumn fish so i got the fish uh, secured in a retainer I did try to give it um, a weigh in there, but it was a bit big for me to do it on my own and actually get it accurate. I was getting somewhere between 42 and a half, 43 and a half, 44 sort of pounds. And I knew then I'd got a late record in weight. I think the previous one was like 41, 14 around that. So I put a pound or so on the new record. This is a, and it was a different fish as well. That was uh, not special. So I guess the fish secured. I guess the kettle on, and then I guess I drop back on one of the rods on the uh, on the big spot. It was no warning, no warning. It bleeps. It was just like as if someone's cut the line. That fish turned out to be another mirror about twenty-two pound, lovely gnarly old thing with quite possibly the biggest mouth I have ever seen on a fish of that size. To be honest, it should have been a lot bigger. It doesn't know how to use its mouth. It needs to eat more. That wasn't the end of the action either. I sent a few messages out. I was awaiting, um, well, Martin the bailiff and uh, Richard, the owner of Nutra Base, had kindly offered to come down and do the weighing and the pictures with me. And one of the rods I've got remaining out ripped off again, and that was a lovely, absolutely immaculate uh, common. I think we weighed that one about twenty-seven pound. I gave Martin a description of the fish, knowing that he'd know exactly which one it was. It's quite distinctive. It had a like, cluster of scales around the back of each uh, gill cover. And he told me it was one called No Name. He seemed quite shocked as well. It wasn't one that he expected to be taking the late record. On your, on your leg, look. Oh, let me throw it on side of the fish. This one you asked for. That's the best time to go for it. Not much about that. Thank 
give my sleeve down and get my sleeves up. Oh, wow. I've got my ass. <laughs> Bye.